let us move on to another application of Euler's formula, namely that using Euler's formula, we can give estimates for the number of edges in a connected plane graph. So the general philosophy is that if you have a graph and you add too many edges, well, in the end, you will have to add the edges in such a place that they will cross. So a plane graph cannot have too many edges. And therefore, a planar graph uh, cannot have too many edges. These two words, planar and plane, are more or less synonymous. But remember, a planar graph is an abstract graph that can be drawn on a plane, whereas a plane graph is the actual drawing itself of a planar graph. But anyway, not minding my spelling mistake here, the theorem says that a connected simple planar graph with at least three vertices and m edges satisfies uh, this inequality. The number of edges is at most three times the number of vertices minus six. Simple is important because if the graph is not simple, you can just draw a thousand edges between two vertices very close together this will not ruin planarity, but it will add lots of edges. So we stay with simple graphs. Uh, you can say more if you know that your graph has no triangles. So a triangle is a subgraph uh, that is isomorphic to the three cycle. If the graph has no triangles, then the number of edges is at most twice the number of vertices minus four. So how do we prove such a thing? Well, since your graph is simple, each face has to be bounded by at least three edges. If a face is bounded by two edges, you are dealing with a multiple edge. If it's bounded by one edge, you are dealing with a loop. But neither of those can occur. So if you have a face somewhere, the surrounding of this face has to have more edges than three. This also applies to the infinite face. So the infinite face, so if this is my graph, then the infinite face here is itself bounded by these edges. Moreover, each edge bounds at most two faces. So if I have an edge in my graph, then things might look like this. And so this edge is bounding these two faces f1 and f2. This edge is bounding f2 and f3, the infinite face, and so on. Um, I cannot have a face finishing mid-edge because a face has to terminate at a vertex. But what I can have are these kind of loose edges. So this edge is entirely immersed in f3, so it bounds only one face. So that's why the at most. So what does this mean? This means that if I take three times the number of faces, so each face is bounded by at least three edges. So I have to have at least, uh, naively I would think that means that there must be at least three edges per face. So the number of edges has to be at least three times the number of faces. But each edge is counted multiple times. It's counted once for each face it bounds. And since this number is at most two, I have to uh, adjust this at most double counting of edges by saying that 3f is smaller than or equal to 2m. This might sound a bit tricky to get your head on around. It was for me. So if, you, if that's the case, pause or stop later and draw some pictures to convince yourself that this is true. But anyway, now assuming that we are convinced that three times the number of faces is at most twice the number of edges, now we use Euler's formula. So Euler's formula, when we solve for f, says that f is equal to m minus n plus two. So we plug this in to this formula, and this is supposed to be a three. So three times this parentheses, the number of faces, is at most two m. But if we simplify, this means that 3m minus 3m plus 6 is at most 2m. Or if we move terms around, it means that 
n is at most 3n minus 6. So this proves the first statement that the graph can have at most this many edges. Now, if the graph has no triangles, then we can repeat the exact argument again, but now we know something more. Previously, we assumed that each uh, face is bounded by at least three edges, but a face bounded by three edges, this means we have a triangle. So if we don't have a triangle, then each uh, face has to be bounded by at least four edges. So we get 4f at is smaller than or equal to 2m instead of 3f as we did before. And simplifying doing things as above, we get that m is at most 3 times 2n minus 4. So again, the idea is that the more you know about the graph, the better bonds you can give. And the general philosophy is that a planar graph cannot have too many edges because then they would start crossing each other at some point. This has some interesting consequences. And one of them is that we can show that the graphs K5 and K33 are not planar. We've already done this, uh, but this is a much shorter proof and maybe you were not convinced with my drawings. Hopefully numbers will convince you. So let's start with K5. It has five vertices and 10 edges. If it were planar, then by the proposition, we would have that the number of edges is smaller than or equal to three times the number of vertices minus six. But putting in numbers, this gives us that 10 is smaller than or equal to nine, which is obviously false. So K5 cannot be planar. K33 has six vertices and nine edges, and it has no triangles. Pause and think why that is. The reason is it is a bipartite graph and bipartite graphs have only cycles of even length. So a triangle is a, um, a cycle of length three, which is odd. So again, if planar, now we can use the triangle-free version of the previous proposition, which said that m is at most two n minus four. And then now instead we get that nine is smaller than or equal to eight, which is obviously a contradiction. So these graphs are not planar. Now we have a new proof for that and we get new insights. Another corollary of the edge estimate is that if you have a planar simple graph, then it has to have a vertex with um, degree at most five. So again, before going into the proof, philosophically, what, does, what would happen otherwise? Otherwise, all the vertices would have high degrees meaning we'd have lots of edges, and again, same problem, they would cross each other. This is not a proof, this is just an intuition to understand why this is a reasonable statement. Now to see why it's a true statement, let's look at the proof. So if the graph is not connected, we look at each connected component, because uh, this statement doesn't change if we look at a specific component or the whole graph. So we're looking at a connected graph, and we need to show that if it's planar, then it will have a vertex with low degree. So this assume that the number of vertices is n and the number of edges is n as usual. If you have less than three vertices, this is trivial because the graph is simple. So you can have at most one edge. Definitely you will have degrees lower than five. If it is not, then we are now in the situation of having a plan planar simple graph with at least three vertices. So we can apply the theorem uh, from the previous slides. So assume that this is not the case. Assume that we don't have a degree uh, smaller than or equal to five. So all vertices have degree at least six. So the sum of all the degrees is at least six times the number of vertices. But then the handshake lemma tells us that the number of edges which is half the number of uh, the, the sum of the degrees is 3n. So if the degree sum is at least 6n, the handshake lemma says that the number of edges is at least half of that, which is 3n. Yeah, but if m is smaller than or uh, is greater than or equal to 3n, 
then this contradicts what we know from the previous theorem that n has to be smaller than or equal to not only 3n, but 3n minus 6. So there must be a vertex of degree at most 5. The assumption that there is no such vertex, that all degrees are at least 6, led to a contradiction.